In today's video, we continue our road trip across Vancouver Island, this time ditching the car and hopping on a ferry. Our destination, Alert Bay on Cormorant Island to explore the town, see totem poles, and learn about the Nimkish First Nation. So come along and let's kick off this adventure. Well, good morning, guys. Good morning, and guys. Welcome back to Port McNeil. We yeah. are going on a little excursion today. Yeah, we sure we are. We bought tickets to go to Alert Bay on the ferry. On We're going to go spend the day there. So, uh, fantastic price. The tickets were only ten dollars per person. Return. Return. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper than yeah. we were expecting. It's about a 50 minute ferry ride, I yes. believe. Yep. Almost an hour each way. Yeah, yeah, and my dad brought his binoculars. Yeah. I'm Just hoping, in case. I'm hoping to <laughs> see an orca or some sort of a bigger whale, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That would be just beautiful mm -hmm. but uh, you never know you so never know good to be prepared mm -hmm. yeah you know what they say a man that is prepared is worth two men so, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah and once we get to alert bay we want to visit the umitsa cultural center yes and yeah. also see the totem poles and the burial ground those are two musts maybe yeah. some hiking as well if time allows all right yes. so now we're gonna go get on the ferry we need to walk down to the port the passengers are heading that way so let's go let's, let's go, go. We arrived in Port McNeil and were able to book tickets for the ferry right on the spot. It was the end of the tourist season, plus it was also a rainy day, so there weren't too many day trippers. Now as a travel tip, there are six sailings a day from Port McNeil to Alert Bay, but it's important that you check the schedule on the BC Ferries website since there is the occasional cargo-only sailing, plus another one that makes an additional stop in nearby Zointula. The ferry ride itself flew by. There is an upper deck for passengers should you travel on a sunny day, but we pretty much hid away from the wind and rain. Well guys, we've just arrived in Alert Bay as it starts to rain. Sam says, this isn't rain because he's from the island and apparently it can come down like pouring buckets this is light drizzle um but yeah there's a few places we want to hit up first up we're gonna go visit the totem poles and the burial ground so yeah we're just making our way on foot we decided to leave the car behind in the port because it's a fairly small island and quite easy to cover on foot. So that's what we're going to do today. How many words are there for rain here on the island? I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> there, I'm surprised we haven't had more rain on this trip, to be yeah. honest. We've been so lucky. This is our seventh day. We've just had showers so far. And even right now, it's just a tiny little drizzle. This doesn't even qualify with locals as rain on Vancouver Island. I see, I see. I'm so glad I've got my umbi. What did you guys think of the ferry ride? Oh, it was a nice ferry ride. Very smooth. Very smooth, exactly. About an hour long. And uh, yeah, here we are at uh, Alert Bay. Alert Bay. As soon as we got off, there was a big sign saying, Home to the Killer Whale. And then they had an info board talking about this town during its heyday when there was a lot of fishing. Apparently there was a lot of money here. This yeah. is where people would come for a good time on the weekend, lots of entertainment. And they said it wasn't unusual for like a fisherman to drop thousands of dollars in like one night of drinking at the yeah. local pub. Well, you see, so. uh, in uh, 1972, they had over 1,000 uh, fishing vessels uh, registered in this uh, island. Mm -hmm. when the fish was uh, plentiful mm -hmm. and uh, they could make a good living out of it. But uh, today we went through the port 
There is nothing there. A lot of people that I used to make a good living out of it just had to quit. Yeah, know? now Alert Bay has more of a tourism based industry, so you can come here and do tours. We saw whale watching tours. Yeah. Actually, all of them are sold out for today. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's a nice place to come and explore on foot. First off, we're going to see the totem poles over there. Go check it out. Let's check it out. Cro yeah. Crossing our fingers for not too much rain. Okay, where are we? So we've just been walking around the town for a little bit, kind yeah. of walking along the water. Our first stop of the day here is at the Namgis Burial Grounds. This is the, uh, it's like a cemetery and uh, the graves are marked with the totem poles. And you see, we cannot walk in there because it's uh, disrespectful, of course. So we can only view from outside the, the area. And as you're gonna see on the videos, there are some totem poles that are nicely painted, but some other ones are uh, kind of, uh, uh, decayed and this is done on purpose by the each individual family some believe that uh, once the totem pole has fallen down the spirit of that person that is buried here has left the place so they leave the totem poles to be decomposed and that way continue the cycle of life and death some other people some other families they believe that they want to upkeep them and some of them are nicely painted so yeah, some of them are so old that even the carvings are starting to fade and disappear mm -hmm. yeah. from mm -hmm. the weather uh, conditions, you know, and years and years of uh, standing up here facing the ocean. And some other ones are still remarkably, uh, you can still tell what kind of carvings they have, you know, yeah. like yeah. eagles and stuff like that. But yeah, it's super, super uh, interesting. And something else we should mention about Alert Bay is that it's so small that you can walk the entire island. You can, you don't need to bring your car here. You can come yeah. as a passenger on foot, like what we did on the ferry. Yeah. And it's accessible to walk the whole island yeah, in exactly. a few hours. That's yeah. what we're going to do. Yeah, we're going to do. Now we did one side. Now we're going to go the other way. Yep. And check out uh, what else is there to see. After visiting the Nimkish original burial grounds, we walked back across town and over to the Umista Cultural Center. It's impossible to get lost because you're basically just following the boardwalk along the waterfront the whole way. The Umista Cultural Center operates as a museum and a cultural education facility in Alert Bay. It was founded in 1980 as a project to house potlatch artifacts which had been confiscated by the Canadian government during a period of cultural repression in the 1920s. But first, we need to explain the potlatch. Potlatch means to give, and for the Kwakwakiwak peoples of the Pacific Northwest Coast, the richest and most powerful person was the one who gave away the most. The potlatch is a gift-giving feast held on the occasion of births, deaths, adoptions, weddings, and other major life events. Today, the Umista Cultural Center houses many of the repatriated artifacts and ceremonial regalia associated with the potlatch. It was the return of these items that gave the center its name, since Umista means the return of something important. No filming or photography is allowed in the hall that houses the potlatch items, but trust us, this is the one place you have to visit if you come to Alert Bay. As you already know, we were using the Trover app to document the places we visited, so you'll find the Umista Cultural Center on our list. Another sight we couldn't miss is the biggest totem pole in the world. The totem stands 173 feet tall and is located directly in front of the big house where visitors can watch traditional dances and performances on Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays during the months of July and August. Wow. 
Welcome. Good. Much needed, much needed speaking update. So basically what happened in a nutshell was we didn't have that much time until no. our ferry departure. We were running around yes. town basically. Yeah, I mean we could have stayed a little longer but the next ferry would have been like two or three hours later. Yeah. And so yeah, we just had a really good time. We continued to walk along the harbor front. Yeah, so basically after we visited the totem poles, mm -hmm. we walked in the opposite direction yes. to the cultural center. Yeah, that's fantastic. Can, yeah, it is really cool so in there. Cool so inside. it was $12 for yeah. adults, 10 for seniors. And they had like cool masks and yes. more totems carvings. and carvings, lots of art yeah. and handicrafts. It was really interesting. It was. So, the, the one area where we weren't able to film was the most interesting. I know. That was <laughs> the best part where they have but, all their ceremonial masks. You're not allowed to film that, but it's honestly the most impressive part. Yes. So that's at the, the very, museum. that's the far yeah. end of the museum. And yeah, you could easily spend quite a bit of time there if mm -hmm. you were to go through and, and read every exhibit. Afterwards, we walked up to the big house. Mm -hmm. And where where you, you can find the, the world's largest totem pole. Yes. The biggest it's, totem pole. It's gigantic. It's it's so it's so tall that it like it kind of boomerangs at the end. <laughs> no, really, like it kind of just bends off into just, the distance. It's it's held down with cables so yes. it doesn't topple over. I would say we saw quite a bit considering how much yeah. time we had in Alert it's, Bay. We we did more of a half day. We kind of arrived later in the morning, but if you wanted to have a bit more time mm -hmm. to spend at the museum and mm -hmm. also to do the hike, I'd suggest turning into a full day. Maybe yeah. catch the first ferry or one of the first two ferries. Yeah, it was just a fantastic trip though. I, I'm really glad we went there. It's just one of the more interesting places we mm -hmm. visited on our entire time in Vancouver Island. And that's pretty much a wrap for a day trip to Alert Bay. It was a short visit, but with a few more hours and better weather, you could plan to do some hiking and explore the town a bit more thoroughly. In the next video, we'll take you on another day trip, this time to explore Zointula on Malcolm Island, where Finnish immigrants set up their own utopian society. So see you then!